Yes, Radio Mystery Theater presents... what your mind does while you sleep. When you close yourself off from the active world and crawl into the passive state of sleep, your mind does not switch itself off any more than does your digestion, your breathing, or your circulation. What shall we make of this earnest exertion of our minds during sleep? Well, we propose to tell you what two people made of theirs. Gloria. Gloria, it's me. It's Ben. She doesn't hear you. She doesn't see you. She's looking right at me, Doctor. She doesn't even know you're here. Our mystery drama, Dreams, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Christopher Tabori. It is sponsored in part by Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule. I'll be back shortly with Act One. In sleep, the mind creates visions, delights and horrors, wild fantasies and oddly disguised memories. If someone tells you he never dreams... Do not believe him. His mind works in sleep as assiduously as any other's. His imaginings are as extravagant as anyone's. He simply does not wish to acknowledge them as his offspring. He won't accept the responsibility. Gloria? Gloria, I, I brought you some flowers. Look, yellow roses. How about that? <laughs> Gloria, isn't there a, uh, a nurse or someone who can put these roses in water? Nobody around except... Oh, well. How are you feeling anyway? Better? It's me, Gloria. It's Ben. It's no use, Mr. Bailey. What? Mrs. Bailey doesn't hear you. You're the doctor, right? Dr. Flusher. Your wife doesn't even see you. Well, she's looking right at me. She doesn't know you're here. How can that be? She's in shock. Well, what's that? Shock is a defense mechanism the psyche employs to escape something extremely painful. She didn't have any pain. Mm, you sure of that? She didn't act like it. She just sort of stiffened up and then fell over. Like she fainted. She did faint. But she came to right away, a couple of seconds... I asked her, did you feel all right? And she looked at me sort of funny and said she felt okay, only tired. She said she felt terribly tired. Well, that's what she said. And then she went in the bedroom and laid down and just stared up at the ceiling. All the symptoms of shock. I thought she was sick. She is sick. Well, what's she got? And what's the matter with her? Profound depression of all the bodily processes and extreme anxiety. Oh, that doesn't sound so bad. Well, doesn't it? I mean, you, you can fix that, can't you? We can try. Well, you can give us something. You mean a pill? Yeah, uh, something. We'll give her time and care. How much time? I don't know. You must have some idea. I said I don't know. Yeah, but you must know. I don't. A few days, a week. I don't know. Oh, that's ridiculous. Well, I'm sorry you think so. I've got to talk to her. You've you got to fix it so I can talk to her. What about? What about? Well, I, different things. Look, she can't, she can't just sit there staring. She's my wife. Yes, I want to talk to you about that. About what? About your marriage. Your relationship during your marriage. It was... Okay. Also, before your marriage. I need as much of her background as you can give me. I need to know all I can about what led up to this. It just happened. 
Nothing like this just happened. Well, it did. Such traumas may have their origins in the very distant past. I'll want to talk to her parents, brothers, sisters, Benny. But for the moment, I want to talk to you. My office is down the hall. Anybody will show you where it is. Will you be there in ten minutes? Okay, you say so. I'll be expecting you. Gloria. Gloria, I'll be back. There's something I gotta find out. It, it's very important. I got a funny feeling you can hear me, Gloria. I don't care what the doctor says. What does he know? You just wait right there. And after I talk to him, I'll be back. You, you just take it easy. And I'll be back. Come in, Mr. Bailey. Now sit down over there. Okay. I think Gloria recognized me just now. No, she didn't. Well, she had a look on her face. I, I, I thought... I'm not interested in what you thought. Look, she's my wife, after all. I know her pretty well. How long have you been married? Five years. So I know her pretty Tell well. Tell me about it. Tell you about it. Mm, the marriage, from the start. What has it been like between the two of you? Oh, the best. Really great. Fantastic. Go back to the beginning. Well, we were uh, really like, you know, in love. Uh, I mean, I mean, totally. Even her parents. What about her parents? Well, parents, you know. We well, speak of them as though they were a special breed of human. Well, they are. You know, I, I, I mean... You're not a parent. Oh, no, not me. Uh, not for a long time, anyway. When you are, you'll find out you're not of a special breed. If it ever happens, I'll be different. Like more human. Mm, yes. Uh, well, tell me about her parents. What's to tell? Small-town people? Very nice and all that, but... Uh, you know. No, I don't know, or I wouldn't be asking. Gloria's mother was very ill at the time. That's why we went to see them. Gloria said we had to, on account of her mother. And what was the nature of her illness? Oh, it's not mental. Nothing like that. It, her liver, I think, something like that. So we make the trip all the way out to the boondocks to see them and tell them we're getting married. I have to talk to her father. You tell me something about her father. <laughs> He's a turkey. Hmm? Turkey? Totally straight. Oh. Well, go on. Well, this turkey starts asking me questions. Such as? Such as... Like... What do I do for a living? What do you do, do, do for a living, young man? I'm a jazz musician. Oh? Uh, 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 what what uh, instrument uh, do you uh, play? Uh -huh. My axe is the bass. Oh, I like those. Uh, yes, uh, tell me, do you have trouble carrying those things around? They let you on buses with them? Why not? Sure. Why well, so big? It's a guitar. A uh, guitar? Mine's electrical. Oh, oh. Uh, Ben, you can support yourself with your electric guitar? I used to go on the road off and on, you know, a two-week gig in Columbus, stuff like that. But that's the pits, and I mean the pits. After Gloria and I are married, the road's out. I want to be with her. I'm working on some songs. There's money in songs if you hit it. Mm, yeah, I suppose... Um, ben, you know about Gloria's mother? She's not in such good health, I understand. No, not at all in good health. Gloria said something about that. Her mother hopes, well, we both hoped that when Gloria got married, we hoped she'd have some security. There's no security these days. Yeah, well, maybe. I don't know. No security per se. I'm hoping that when Gloria gets through talking to her mother uh, upstairs, maybe she'll have been able to persuade her that uh, that things will be all right. Oh, they'll be all right. Yes, well, maybe. I hope so. Ben, 
my wife doesn't have too much longer to live, the doctors say. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, maybe everything will be all right. Oh, here's Gloria now. Well, dear, you talk to your mother? I talk to her. Uh, yes, and? She says, if Ben and I get married, she never wants to see me again. How about that? Well, maybe she didn't mean quite that. No, she meant it. She meant it, all right. Oh, that's really the pits. Come on. Let's go, Ben. Let's go, Ben, she said. And we went. I see. After all, it was very nice of us to go all the way out there to the boonies to talk to them. We didn't have to do that. Hardly anybody asked their parents anymore, can they get married or whatever. If that hadn't been for a mother being sick. Uh, look here, I have a patient coming in a few minutes, but I'll want to talk to you again, Mr. Bailey. Maybe several times. Why not? I, I want to go back and see Gloria, Dr. Fleischer. It won't do any good. You can't reach her. Nobody can. Not yet. Well, what I really want to do, I, I, I brought some flowers, some yellow roses. I, I want to get a vase and put them in some water. There's nobody around to do it, so I thought... Well, if that's all you want to do... That's all. That's it. All right. But I'll want to talk to you again. Gloria. Listen, I can only stay for a couple of minutes. I told the doctor I was going to put the flowers in some water, but... Listen. He says you can't hear me or see me. I don't buy that. I don't buy that for a minute. I think you just don't want to talk to me. Well, okay. You don't want to talk to me. I accept that. I don't like it, but I accept it. But Gloria, one thing I got to know, and I mean I got to, it's life and death. That's how important it is, and I'm not kidding. Gloria, I've got to know your dreams. Got to. Okay? Now, what did you dream last night? I, I don't need all the details. Just in general. Or, or anything at all that I, that I can... Oh, Gloria. Come on now, Gloria. What did you dream last night? I've got to know. I've got to know. If you don't tell me, I don't know what'll become of us. Place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Place your bets, please. Hello. Place oh. your bets. Hello there. All bets are down. No more bets. Eleven. Black. Odd and low. Son of a gun. Well, that washes me out. Come on over to the lounge. I'll buy us a drink. Place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. No, I don't know. I, I, I don't Come on, Ben, you need it. Face your bed. How's your wife? Face your bed. I went to see her this morning. Oh, yeah? Took her some flowers. And? Doctor said she didn't even know I was there. Oh. Said she's in shock. Mm. But I know better. She knew I was there all right, and she knew what I wanted. She just wouldn't give it to me. Well. Well, I'm not giving up. I'm going back tomorrow, and the day after, and the day after that. I've got it. If I don't know what she dreams... How am I going to know what number to play? There is evidence that mankind all over the world and down through the ages dreams and has dreamed the same dreams. And many men have wrestled with the problem of what to make of them. But how many have wrestled with another's dreams in order to turn them to profit? We shall return shortly with Act Two. People acknowledge that dreams are the creations of the human soul which struggle to the surface during sleep. 
Disguised as they are, these grotesqueries can be translated into recognizable thoughts and desires. But before the advent of the scientific age, everyone believed that dreams were visitations by supernatural beings and could portend the future. A small minority still does. And an even smaller group believes that dreams can foretell the winning number on a roulette wheel. Gloria, it's Ben. I told you I'd be back. Oh, Gloria, please talk to me. If you only knew how important it is. I'm going out of my mind if you don't talk to me. I don't know what we're going to do. Please, honey. Any luck, Mr. Bailey? Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> she just looks right through me. No, I'm sorry about that. Me too. I'm disappointed. So am I. She's talking to me. What? She talks to you? Since when? Early this morning. I stopped by to see her. She seemed to know who I was, so I stayed for a while, and we... We had quite a chat. What, what, what about? Uh, what did you talk about? What did she tell you? Oh, oh there. Slow down. I, I gotta know. What did she say? I don't want to talk here. You meet me in my office. You know where it is. Five minutes. Five, yes, 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 yes. Come in, Mr. Bailey. Thanks, Dr. Fleischer. You sit down. Now, we have to... You talk... said that Gloria talked to you. Yes, she did. Well, what about? I mean, what did she talk about? Well, I did most of the talking. I had to explain who I was, where she was, all that sort of thing. She seemed content with what I told her. Accepted everything. Yes. Yes, but what did she tell you? Why are you interested? Why wouldn't I be? Are you afraid she revealed something you'd rather she hadn't? No, of course not. One would think you'd simply be grateful that she's responding. I am, certainly. Only... Only what? Doctor, did she tell you what she dreamed last night? What a very strange question. Did she? Most peculiar. Why do you want to know about your wife's dream? Gloria always had this thing about dreams. Mm, thing? But she believed in them. Believed? How? Well, like the one about the eggs. Oh, tell me about that. You know, I told you her mother was very sick. Yes, you told me. And when Gloria told her she was going to marry me, her mother said she never wanted to have anything to do with her ever again. I remember you telling me that. Now, I want to hear about the egg dream. Gloria had this idea that if we were to have a baby, her mother's first grandchild, well, that's a big deal, right? Very big deal. But she thought if she could tell her mother she was pregnant... And they get back together again. Anyway, once the baby was born, they would, right? It often happens that way. Once she woke me up in the middle of the night, and she said, Ben, ben I just, just had, a, had dream. a dream. Oh, what? what? You, you had a dream. Well, I want to tell you before I forget it. Well, tell me, tell me. Go ahead. I was walking down this long corridor, all white, marble, and light coming through this big, tall window. And my mother was standing there. With the light shining down on her. And I went up to her. I was so glad to see her. And I said, where is it? Where is it? Well, where was what? I don't know. Something I wanted. Something I was looking for. Something. What, what about your mother? What did she say? Nothing. She didn't say a thing. She didn't even look at me. She was looking beyond me. Off somewhere. But she was smiling. Oh, she looked so beautiful, Ben. So I kept running through this place. Stopping everybody and asking, where is it? Nobody seemed to know, and I was getting desperate. It was getting to be a nightmare, kind of. But then, I found it. Yeah? Yeah, well, what was it? It was a dozen eggs. Eggs? A, a carton of eggs. Well, you know how they come, a, a dozen to a carton? Well, you know. Oh, yeah, I know. And I, I think I was pleased that I found it. You think you were? Well, I, at first I was. Till I opened the carton... And there were all these, these beautiful eggs. But one was broken. And then I felt so sad. That's when I woke you up. I, I had to. I just had to. That's all right. I'm glad you did. Ben, 
You know what I think the dream means? What? The eggs. They're my children. The children I'm going to have someday. I'm going to have 12 children. Well, 11 anyway. Because one of them will be broken. Only one of them will be broken. That's what she said. That's quite a dream. Yeah. Thing is, just a short time after that, after she told me the dream, Gloria got pregnant. She was so excited. And you? Me, well, for men it's different. Mm -hmm. Somewhat for some men. Anyway, Gloria was about to write to her mother. Once she was really sure that she was going to have a baby. But before she could do that, she had a miscarriage. Yeah, she lost the baby. It was very sad for a woman. I was disappointed, too. Because I figured I was ready for a kid about then. I mean, if that's what Gloria wanted, I could afford for her to have it. You could afford it? Well, money-wise, I was in the chips. How did that come about? From the dreams. Gloria's dreams. Uh, I don't quite follow you. You're not a gambler, are you, Doctor? Um, no. Life is one long gamble as far as I'm concerned. I like to try and beat the game now and then. And do you beat the game? <laughs> Not very often. Not till I married Gloria and started betting her dreams. What does that mean, betting her dreams? You see, Dr. Fleischer, every dream means something. Oh, indeed it does. It means a number. A number that is going to come up for you. You don't really believe that, do you? Certainly I believe it, because it's true. I know it's true. I know, because it worked for me. And how did it work for you? Doctor, a dream about eggs means the number 72. You don't say. Absolutely. And that night, I went to the casino. Now, you can't play 72 at the roulette table. Why not? Because the numbers on the wheel only run up to 36 and a double zero. So you couldn't bet on number 72? I figured out a way. Well, no, I, I, I actually didn't figure it out myself. There was a woman there. Oh? She figured it out. Tell me about this woman. Name's Crystal. But it's not important about her. It wasn't anything like you're thinking between her and me. I wasn't thinking anything. Anyway, Crystal's a real gambler. She's at the casino before it opens and she stays till it closes. She's the one told me about dreams meaning numbers. And it worked. It worked. Every time Gloria told me one of her dreams, I'd go to the casino and Crystal would tell me what number to play. I'd play it and it would win. Except for 72. No, no, no. I won with that one too. Well, how could you? It's an established fact that a dream about eggs means 72. I mean, we had to start with that, you know. Um, go on. So Crystal says, Play two numbers, seven and two. I did. And in 20 spins of the wheel, one or the other came up. Interesting. Foolproof. Totally. No, I didn't mean that. No? Well, what did you mean? When I talked to your wife this morning, she told me a dream she had last night. She did? Why didn't you say so? What was it? She dreamed she was in a forest. And she climbed a tall tree. And at the top of the tree, she found a dozen eggs. No. You mean that? She dreamed that. She told you. A dozen eggs. All of them broken. No more bets. All bets are down. Fourteen, even, red, us. and low. Hear that? Now, come on, pay no attention. If I'd left my chips where they were on seven and two, I'd be broke practically. Finish your drink. We'll go back to the table and have another try. Crystal, I can't afford it. <laughs> if you could afford it, it wouldn't be gambling. How's that again? Gambling is when you stand to lose. I don't follow you. The big thrill comes when you lose everything. That's a thrill. The biggest thrill there is. Drink up. Try again. That sanitarium costs money. Dr. Fleischer costs money. But the dreams. 
Remember when you came in here with your wife's dream about the eggs? 72. And since there's no 72 on the wheel, we figured you should... Uh, you figured. That half on seven, half on two. And they came up. Mm, three times. And you doubled your bets. I was a rich man that night. Ah, oh, you will be again. Eggs always mean 72. Maybe the doctor wasn't telling me the truth. Maybe he made it up. Maybe. No, he wouldn't do that. Why should he? No reason. Wait a minute. Maybe the trouble is... Gloria told the dream to him, not to me. Maybe that's why it didn't work tonight. Why seven never came up, or two either. That could be it. No. No, 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 wait. Come on, I got it. Hmm? I know what I did wrong. I've got it. What, what is it? 72. 72, seven and two. I really played seven and two. And you won. Yeah, that was the first time. But this time I lost. The first time, Gloria told her dream about the eggs to me. This time she told it to the doctor. Yes, yes. You got something, Ben. I can see it in your eyes. I wasn't supposed to play seven and two tonight. I was supposed to add seven and two. And put your chips on nine. Yeah. Come on. Oh, that's it. That's got to be it. Place I know bets. this is it. I know it. Place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Please place your bets. On nine, please. All bets are down. No more bets. <laughs> Thirty-two, red, even, and high. Many hypotheses have been put forth as to why some people have a passion for gambling. Greed, boredom, excitement, and others. Even including sexual compensation. But... There is a consensus that if you gamble long enough, you are certain to end up broke because the odds are deliberately set against you. Therefore, it would appear that the chief, the most pervasive purpose of gambling is to lose. I shall be back shortly with Act Three. Exclusively, the fools of the world that have gambled compulsively. Dostoevsky, one of the greatest of the Russian novelists, reduced himself and his family to abject poverty to gratify his inordinate passion for gambling. Other driven gamblers were Julius Caesar, Mark Antony, Henry VIII of England, and Wyatt Earp. Gloria, it's me. Baby, it's Ben. Ben? Hello? Oh, honey. You know, that's the first time you've spoken to me for three days. It is? Yeah, you've been kind of out of it. I guess I have. But you're all right now, huh? I feel kind of fuzzy, you know? Oh, well, sure. You've been in shock. That's, that's what the doctor said. Oh, he's nice. The doctor. What's his name? Fleischer. Oh, yeah. Fleischer. He told me that. I don't know why I have so much trouble remembering things. Well, you remember me. Me? Yeah. I remember you. Sort of. What do you mean, sort of? I'm your husband. You're married to me. I know. Well, then. Were we happy? What? Being married. Were we happy together? Well, certainly we were happy. We were very happy. <laughs> what do you mean, were we happy? Well, I don't remember it very well. We were very... Ah, uh, look. It's this shock business. It does things to people. Dr. Flesher told me. I'll have to get him to tell me. Sure. He'll tell you. And then you'll be all right. And you can get out of here and come home and we can start all over. Being happy? Well, certainly. Oh, if I could just remember being happy. You will. Then I think I'd be all right. They're not remembering. I lost the feeling somewhere. Look, you're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Now that you're talking to me, you'll be great. <laughs> you don't know what it's been like when you wouldn't talk to me, not even say hello or anything. I didn't know you'd been here before. Every day. Every day. I brought those yellow roses. But you don't remember that, I guess. Mm, no, I don't. Thank you. Uh, but, um, you, you've been talking to Dr. Fleischer, haven't you? 
He told me you started talking to him yesterday. Mm, yes, I did. I don't know why I did. But he was so quiet, so patient, very gentle, very sweet. Like my father, kind of. He wanted to take care of me. Well, sure, that, that's how these doctors are. That's their business. He didn't make it sound like business. He made it... He made it sound like he cared about me. Oh, look, don't cry, Gloria. It's going to be all right. I trusted him. Somebody I don't even know. And I trusted him. Look, I, I don't think I should stay much longer. I, I don't want to upset you. He was so gentle with me. Like nobody's ever been. Gloria... There's something you can do for me. I can't do anything for anybody. Something important. I can't even do anything for myself. Tell me if you had a dream last night. Please, Gloria. A dream? Remember, you always used to tell me your dreams. Did I? Oh, yes, I did, didn't I? What about last night? Why did you dream last night? Rain. You said rain? Lots and lots of rain. Raining all over. That means I'm going to die. No, no, it doesn't mean I'm that. I'm going to die. And I'll never remember being happy. Oh, no, Gloria, please don't go. Please don't. Mr. Mary. Hey, here's, here's the doctor. Don't cry. What's going on here? Well, we were just talking, and, and she started to cry. Oh, it'll be all right, Mrs. Bailey. You just go ahead and cry, and later on we'll talk about it. It was so great that she recognized me and, and everything. And I it. want to see you in my office, Mr. Bailey. Sure. Five minutes, Okay. Come in, Mr. Bailey. I'm sorry, Dr. Fleischer, about what happened. That's all right. It won't hurt her to cry. She'll be doing a lot of it, I imagine. She will? But I'd rather she cries when she's with me. Not with you, for the time being. Don't sit down. I don't know what I said that made her cry. Tell me what you were talking about. Well, her and me, us being married, were we happy? <laughs> How about that? She says she can't remember what happy is. There are a lot of things she doesn't remember right now. A lot of feelings. That's what happens in shock. But she'll get over it, won't she? I hope so. Now, tell me what you were talking about just before she started to cry. I didn't want to make her cry, Dr. Fleischer. I have told you crying won't hurt her in the least. It may help. Now, what brought on the weeping? She started to tell me her dream. The one she had last night. Rain falling everywhere. Oh, she told you? Well, yes, of course. She thinks it means she's going to die. Or that she wants to. Wants to? Just when things are getting better? Why would she? Tell me, before she fell ill, or did she have this dream often about rain? She... She had it one time. Tell me about it. She just told me, and, and then the mail came. The mailman dropped it through the slot, and I, I went and got it. Yes. And there was a letter from her father. She hadn't heard from her parents since we got married, and I said, Hey, honey, here's a letter from your father. I don't want it. What do you mean you don't want it? It's from your father. You're not still mad at your father, are you? No. Well, I'm not mad at him. Why should you... I'm not. Then why don't you want to read the letter? Because I know what's in it. Oh, you don't know what... How, how can you know what's in it? Because of the dream. The dream about the rain? Yes. Well, what about it? It means my mother's dead. Oh, Gloria, come on. Now open it. Read it. Throw it away. Honey, you don't want me to do that. Come on, open it. I don't want to touch it. Get rid of it. I just can't believe it. I don't, don't want, want to touch it. Throw it away. That's what she said. Throw it away. Like there was death in it. And she didn't want to touch death. Something like that. She didn't want to recognize the reality of her mother's death. Seeing the announcement written out in words would make it real. She was trying to put off the reality. She'd already dreamed of her mother's death, the rain dream. Now her dream had come true with all the accompanying regret and guilt and grief. You've lost me, Doctor. I, I, I can't follow you. Yes, I know you can't. It's silly of me to try and explain what's so complicated. 
I only hope that your wife... Well, did you throw the letter away? No, actually, I didn't. I thought maybe later she'd change her mind. I just stuffed it in my pocket, and it's a good thing I did. Because a few days later, the doorbell rang, and I went to the door and opened it, and who should be standing there but Gloria's father? He said, hello, Ben. Hello, Ben. Well, hello. Hello there. We've been meaning to get in touch with you. Gloria's been very upset. Um, may I come in? Oh, yeah, well, sure. Certainly. Come on in. Oh, thank you. Gloria, it's your father. My father? Oh, Daddy. Oh, Daddy. Oh, there, there. It's all right. It's all right. It's going to be all right, little girl. I've been meaning to call mm-hmm. you. I should have called you. I wondered why you didn't. Well, I just couldn't, but I, I was going to. Oh, it must be so awful for you. I, I shouldn't have let you go through it all alone. Yeah, wait now, when Gloria. I got the letter. You did get the letter? Of course. And I knew right away what it said. Well, then why didn't you come home? Oh, I should have. I know I should have. You would have made your mother so happy. Mother? Sit down, darling. Look, she thought the letter... Sit down, dear. I have something very sad to tell you. Mother's dead. She died last night. Listen, Gloria thought... Mother died three days ago. No, dear. She died last night. Oh, but the letter... The letter said... You know what the letter said. Well, she never read it. She, she told me to throw it away. Oh, Gloria. But, but, but I didn't. I didn't. I got it right here. It's in my pocket. I think someone should read it. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I got it. It says, Our dearest daughter, your mother wants me to write and tell you that we're both very sorry for the way we behaved towards you when you married Ben. If you're happy with him, that's all that matters. I wish you would come home as soon as you can and bring Ben with you. And that's when the thing happened. The thing? What you said was shock. Gloria stiffened up, and her face took on a blank look, and she fell over, fainted. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. You've been a big help. I hope so. You have, you have. Now, uh, I'm expecting a patient, Is she going to be all right, doctor? It will take time. Maybe a long time. But I have hopes. Yes. I have great hopes. Place your bets. No more bets, please. 28, black, even, and high. Ben. Ben, over here. Oh, Crystal. Place your bets. There you are. You want a drink? Place your bets. I don't think so. I thought you weren't going to show up. That's what I thought, too. Well, I'm glad you did. How did your luck run tonight? Oh, rotten. How's your wife? Better. Hmm. Doctor says he has high hopes. Says it's going to take time. Maybe a long time. But he has very high hopes for her. Ah, that's wonderful. Yeah. It's going to cost a lot of money. The doctor, the sanitarium, whole bit. Oh, what's money? Yeah. <laughs> she talked to me this morning. She did? Hey, that's sensational. She told me a dream she had last night. Ah, oh, fantastic. What was it? It was about rain. Rain means number 36. Gloria thinks it means she's going to die. Ben, remember that fabulous night when 36 came up eight times running? Oh, what a night that was. Remember? Yeah. Oh, come on. What are we waiting for? You going to play? Look here. Two hundred and fifty dollars. That's my rent money. Due tomorrow. Are you going to bet it all? Oh, you're darn right. On 36? Well, Place generally I play my own system, system, but tonight I'm going to... Place your bets. Uh, 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 36, please. Oh. Place your bets. Put your money down there. Hurry up. Oh, no, all I... All bets are down. Place your oh, bets. No late, more bets. You dumb dumb. Thirty-three, black, odd, and high. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm sorry, oh, Crystal. I'm no. sorry. Oh, what sorry? <laughs> That's the most excitement I've had in years. Trouble with you, Ben. You're not a gambler. Not really. You don't know what gambling's all about. 
I guess I don't. So long, Crystal. Nice to have known you. Hey, that mean you're not coming back? I'm going to start looking for a job. And when I get one, I got other places to spend my money. So long. used the stones from white plums for dice. The Iroquois preferred peach piss. The eastern tribes liked animal bones. And there is a story handed down through the centuries that the invaders who came here with Columbus made cards from the leaves of the copus tree. If true, that would mean that the first deck of playing cards appeared here in 1492. And the game goes on. Cast included Christopher Tapori, Robert Dryden, and E.V. Juster. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time...